Hi, my name is Arwen Brooke, and today we're going to do a really fun mat class that includes the use of the magic circle and the foam roller. You can still participate in class if you don't have these props, so join me anyway. Um, also, we are going to be doing some adventurous stuff near the end. I hope you are a fan of the rollover and teaser. We're going to combine them into one movement, um, but if you aren't sure what I'm talking about, that's okay. We'll be um, building up to it strategically. So I hope you enjoy, and we're going to get started with the ring standing. Okay, so we're going to begin at the center of our mat with our magic circle and you're going to take it and place it between your inner ankles. And as you find your way back up to standing, organize your feet so that they're a little bit, um, they're, they're narrow enough to feel a squeeze on the ring. So you'll set the distance at about um, ring width and then a little bit inside of that so you can feel a little bit of engagement there between the ankles. And so if you were lying down, um, you could just be in the supine position and we'll take off into some footwork and you can do the same thing um, bridging. Okay, so let's just start with some big arm circles up. Inhale, reach up to the sky, exhale, circle the arms wide and back down. Let your arms continue to move with your breath. So each inhale, the arms stretch up and exhale, they lower. And then start to imagine that your arms are moving through something a little more thick and viscous than the air around you. We're gonna create a little bit of internal resistance. So you're sweeping your arms up, maybe through water, maybe through honey. Let it just be sort of fun with your imagination as well as the experience in your body. And then we'll take the arms up and on the next exhale, you're gonna rise up onto your toes, but let's take your time and just move maybe onto the balls of the feet. So we're not trying to get up onto our tippy toes. And then inhale, lower back down. And if we wobble, that's okay. We're just gonna play with balance, but use your connection between your ankles to start to feel a little bit more sort of powerful in that joint, your ankle joints. You might understand them and know them to be mobile and that they can wobble and wiggle, but when you connect them inward, they get a little bit more stable, a little more strong. So you're finding that and encouraging that with each breath and you still might wobble. That's totally okay. And one more time, rising up onto the toes and then lower down and then just circle the arms by your sides. Now we're going to go into a squat. So you'll bend the knees and reach your arms forward and then reach back up to standing. So the arms stretch forward, the sit bones stretch back, the knees stretch forward, the heels fold back, and two more like that, warming up those big muscles and feeling the engagement from the inner ankles come right up through the inner thighs into the base of the spine, creating connectivity around the pelvic floor and low abdominals. So, I said two a while ago, but we're going to do one more. Come down and hold. So you're in your squat. You feel folded at the hips, folded at the knees and ankles. And then you're going to just hover your abdominals a little bit more deeply into your spine and roll to the balls of your feet again. And then lower your heels back down. I'm going to jump and turn. You guys can keep moving. We're going to, again, rock to the balls of the feet and lower the heels. And rock and lower and rock and lower. If you want to leave the ankle work out, just holding the squat is plenty of good work. Two more like that and one more. And then rise up, take your arms up to the sky and circle them around and down. Okay, we're gonna switch positions down. The ring is gonna come to the outside of your ankle. So you'll step your feet inside and then widen your feet until you can feel as though you're stretching the ring apart with your stance, okay? And we've talked about feet a fair amount in the past, but just to review, we're gonna ha wanna keep weight on our inner border as well as our outer border. Having the opening energy into the ring can encourage us to put more weight on the outer border. So see if you can feel engagement outward and yet still keep some engagement into that inner foot particularly where the big toe meets your foot. Okay, and then from here, we're gonna just practice. Inhale the arms up, that releve again, and on the exhale, rise to your toes. Inhale, lower down. 
And again, exhale, rocking onto the balls of the feet and lower. Now the challenge here will be to come up, keeping those ankles engaging outward, but keep some weight on the big toe metatarsal, right? So that first toe is very connected into the mat. And two more like that. And one more. And then we'll lower down. And then let your arms come back down by your sides, reach them forward. We're going into your squats again, keeping that engagement into the width of your body. So you're connecting into the outer thighs, outer hips, and rising up. We'll do four more just like that. Reaching your arms forward, sit bones back, heels back, knees forward, and make this really bright, powerful zigzag through the body. If you don't have the right prop for any of this, you know squats are good for you anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. And now we're gonna come down and hold and drop the shoulders down. And then again, feel your weight move towards your big toe as you rock onto the balls of your feet. And then lower back down. It's quite tricky, but it's some good engagement around the ankles. If it doesn't feel good, I know there's a few things going on with feet and ankles in the group this morning, you just eliminate this ankle bit and stick to just holding a squat. It's tons of heat all on its own. One more time and then lower the heels, rise up, reach up, and then reach the arms wide and down. Stay here. We're going to tip onto our left foot and hover the right. Trying as best we can to create a straight line through the spine that's just slightly tilted and then just open your left leg, this guy, into the ring and it's not gonna move as much as it's just gonna kind of fire you up a little bit more on the sides of your hips, yeah? And four, three, two, one, land your right foot, rock over to the right, hovering the left. And again, you're just pulsing outward, further turning on those outer hip muscles. Good, and four, three, two, one, and then land it down. And then go ahead and step out of the ring. Take the ring in your hands. I'm gonna stand with my feet together as an option that helps put us into our inner thighs a little bit more our midline, but for balance, if you'd like to be hip distance apart, feel free. So what we're gonna do next, again, you have the choice of hip distance or feet and knees together. We're gonna reach the arms out in front of us and just take the arms overhead. While you're doing that, keeping the shoulders soft and the arms as straight as you can. There's some effort required to keep your arms straight if you're also focusing on softening around the shoulders, right? The cue to be soft around the shoulders can often sort of be um, muddled by soft elbows which helps keep your shoulders soft. See if you can keep softening the shoulders and encourage the upper arm bones to draw in towards your midline. At the top, hold, and then swivel your body to one side, just a twist to the right and center, and twist to the left and center, and twist and center. So it's like you are in a narrow tube and you're spinning inside the tube right? You're not bumping into the walls. And then lowering the arms down, we're going to switch positions, placing your hands on the inside of the ring. So then holding the arms out again at about shoulder height, and then float the arms up to the sky and lower. And rise up and lower and up. We'll do that three more times, warming up the shoulders, pulling the arms apart helps encourage the warmth that we're getting out of this. You'll probably feel it either way, but if you want to maximize your efforts, go ahead and really focus on stretching the ring apart. And then one more time, reaching up to the sky, hold there and swivel to the right and center and swivel to the left and center. Keep going, alternating sides and finding that narrowness to your being that keeps you really sort of centered inside your little sort of imaginary tube. And then one more each direction, 
twisting from your entire being and then release the arms down for just a moment. And then we're gonna go into a squat. So you're gonna reach the arms forward, hips and heels reach back, and then rise up. And again, reaching out. If you can, bring the arms overhead so that the arms are near the ears, but only if you can make it there without feeling any sort of pinch or engagement in the neck that feels overactive. Okay, we're gonna do one more. So fold and hold, starting with that nice deep squat, find that line through your torso, and we're gonna imagine just our torso in the tube, and again, we're gonna twist to one side and center, and twist to the other side, center. Just two more each direction. This is really warming, and twist, and center. Last one each direction, and center, and all the way to the left, center, reach up. And then we're gonna roll down through the spine, taking the ring with us towards the toes. You can just drop the ring there, soften the knees and pause now in a forward bend. If your feet are together, you might like to step them apart, but if you are happy as is, go ahead and leave it. We're gonna stretch the right leg to straight, give your lateral sling a stretch, IT band, some of this glute and hip stuff on the outside and then soften on the right. Stretch the left leg towards straight. Keep breathing. And then let's take the ring, move it out of the way and just help yourself out towards downward dog and then down to all fours. What we're gonna do next is use the roller. So you'll switch gears here. We're gonna put the roller across the mat. And for this, what we'll do first is place the forearms on the roller. So as if you're in all fours, but forearms landing on the roller. And then as we like to do, we're gonna move our shoulders just to remind them of some of their vast potential, letting them slide together, your shoulder blades, and then lift the heart away from the roller and feel the shoulder blades separate and widen around your ribcage towards the front. And then lift and hold the next one and just play with keeping that width across the back of the shoulders as you roll the roller forward and back. Some active, dynamic engagement of those shoulder stabilizing muscles. And now we're going to take the roller towards the knees. It's one of those moments where the mat might really get in the way more than anything, but just going to roll with it. Literally, we're going to put the roller under our thigh. And then feel the forearms, find that same connection into the mat that you just had on the roller. So you might sink one time just to kind of remind yourself again what's um, possible in your body, what the range is. And then lift up out of the elbows and you're going to use your elbows to steer as you massage those quads of yours. You've heard me say many, many times how powerful and important these muscles are and how their tightness patterns can really interfere with our comfort in our back, our hips, and just about everywhere. So we're gonna just do a little bit of massaging to the front of the thighs, and you're gonna start to move a little bit, tilting your pelvis to the left, and tilting your pelvis to the right. To massage more than just the front of your thighs, you're gonna massage the sort of outer quads and the inner quads, moving the roller into all the surface area that you can discover and find. Okay. Now, let's take your knees to the mat, come off of the elbows, and then we're gonna take the roller and set it up lengthwise on the mat and come to sitting seated on it. Now there's a few of you I know that'll probably do this a little bit differently. We're gonna do a quad stretch. So if you'd like to lie down and do it on your tummy or on your side, feel very free to um, improvise your own version of this. But what I'll show you is the version we're gonna do with the roller first. You're gonna start with your knees folded and your ankles folded back and then step your left foot forward alongside the roller. And then we'll take our hands to the mat behind us. So for a lot of us, this might already be all the stretch that we need to get 
a lot of um, sort of engagement and energy into those muscle fibers. If you have room to, we're gonna hover the hips off of the roller and then just play with finding a little bit more of a pelvic tilt towards 12 o'clock. Trying to tip the pelvis back so your abdominals draw in, your tail curls under, and it's as if you could land your sacrum on the roller. Good. It looks like, yeah, some of you are finding your own quad stretch, so that's good. If you can't figure it out, let me know. And then we're gonna try to find some movement in our spine even while we stretch the quad. So you're gonna lower the hips down and round your spine and then lift the hips and lift the chest and extend. And then again, curl the tail under and around. And inhale, lengthen into that heart open, spacious part of your uh, extension that really focuses on the lift to the chest and round. One more time, lift and exhale round. And then just walk your hands forward, come up and to the other side. We go find a stretch, thumbs up. Okay, thank you. So in our second side, same as before, left leg's folded back now, right foot forward, hands come behind you. All right, so we're working towards stretching the quads. If your knee is coming up off of the mat in this position, see if you can bring it down. If you can't, that's okay, but that's the direction you're working towards. And then hover your hips up off of the roller lift the chest keep the shoulders nice and open and then curl the tail under and emphasize that sense of tuck to the pelvis it's not going to move much and you probably can't see any sign of it in my body but it's an engagement nonetheless it comes with lots of glutes and abdominals and it really helps to wake up your stretch that much more and then start to move inhale lift the heart exhale curl the tail under more round and maybe lower the hips some inhale we lift the chest exhale we curl and round and flow let your breath give you that that movement inspiration let it take you on a wave inhale floating up exhale rolling in one more time each direction maybe lifting that chest and then curling inward and then continue to curl inward to help you roll forward okay so now courtesy of that stretch our quads are much more released and they're going to allow us to feel things like our abdominals and our glutes that much more, which we're gonna use right now. So what I'm gonna have you do is take your roller and slide it back, keeping one end between your inner thighs. So you've lifted it off of the mat and it's between your knees. And then you can have the other end just kind of hanging out on the mat behind you. Yeah. Okay, so from there, coming up to high kneeling, just gonna take your arms up to the sky and around into a few large circles, loosening up some of the stuckness of that joint and just feeling into some of the freedom of that joint. And then reach the arms up and on the exhale, you're gonna pull the belly in and curl the tail under like you did in your quad stretch, try to flatten the low back and take your hands all the way to the mat. Maybe your hips come back a little bit. Maybe you drop the last three inches. Once your hands are down, you're gonna lengthen the chest forward and stretch into a cow pose. And then exhale, curl the tail under. And again, try to feel your hamstrings engage to help you lift the belly to help you. And you're gonna come up off of your palms, up off of your fingertips and roll back up to high kneeling. Take a big arm circle. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, flex and roll down. Attempting to keep your hips forward over your knees. That's the direction rather than the destination. Inhale the heart forward, tail up in the air. Exhale, curl again, drawing the sit bones down, lifting the palms up, stretching into the low back, and then rolling all the way up. Inhale the arms circle around and back. One more time, inhale. Exhale, flexing the spine, taking that Curve into your low, low back, and then landing your hands down. Take your chest forward. Feel a nice little stretch to your heart and tummy, and then round your spine and hold, curling the tail under. Now we're gonna tuck the toes under, 
Take a nice deep breath in and on the exhale, squeeze your roller, lift your abdominals and hover your knees just a few inches off of the mat for five, four, three, two, and one. Land it down. Reach your chest forward. And again, exhale, curl the tail under, lift your low belly, drop your sit bones down, tuck like you mean it. And four, three, two, one. Land it down. Stretch the front body. And one more time, scoop the belly in, curl the tail under, squeeze into your roller, hug towards your midline. And land it down. Take one more cow pose, letting your abdominal wall stretch out and then come to neutral. Now we're gonna take the roller from the knees to the side of your mat, alongside you about um, you know, just right alongside your right hand. And then you're gonna take your left arm up to the sky to thread the needle, first reaching up, and then bringing the back of the hand to the roller and letting it roll with you as you twist. And then we'll come back up, reach to the sky, and thread and roll. So if you don't have the roller, or you don't have room to do it here, it's still a wonderful movement, the thread the needle exercise all by itself. On this last one, stay there with the roller um, in your twist, and all you'll do is back out of it as far as the roller can come without running into you, and then you'll roll back into that deeper stretch. So we'll just stay there and do about four or five little deepening twists, rocking back, rocking deeper. Good. Letting your Left side of your rib cage, your left lung, swivel all the way around your body towards the front. And then come on back to the mat. We'll take the roller to the other side. So from here, right arm reaches up to the sky, opening the shoulders. And then threading the needle, place the back of your hand on the roller and let it carry you into that really lovely, supported, deep stretch. And then inhale, reach up. And exhale under. Everyone breathes in different speeds, so feel free to move at the speed that supports you, the breath and your movement. And then for the last one, after three, lifting up, we'll just stay there and kind of roll in and out of that deep twist, coming back just a little and then spiraling a little more fully. And then maybe two more. And one more. Feeling that right lung, right rib cage swivel under, and then come back to the start. Okay, both hands on the mat now. Toes tuck under, walk your feet and knees together. Give your thighs a good squeeze in of close contact to help remind them of their inner musculature, so their inner thighs. And then scoop and curl the tail under, pelvic floor lifting up, low abdominals lifting up. Now we're gonna scoop and hover the knees in our cat stretch, and then we're gonna swivel the knees to the right and center, and swivel left and center. Moving now the lower half of our body into rotation. Keep pushing down into the earth with the arm, lifting the low belly, adjusting your toes might sort of wiggle a little bit back or side to side. You can just adjust. We're doing about six to each side and have some fun with it. And then lower the knees down and take yourself back into a child's pose. Lengthen the arms overhead and rest your heart and your chest on the thighs. Let your forehead settle down and let your breath come fully into your back. And then we'll just slide the hands towards our knees as we roll up to high kneeling. And then using your ring, once again for a shoulder stretch, just take it behind you. And you can hold it in any position, any grip, and try your child's pose again with the arm stretching up and back. If this doesn't feel safe in your shoulders, you can just relax the arms back alongside your waist, like so.
okay? And then if you hold the ring, lift it up towards the sky to help stretch you back up. And then we're gonna just come to seated. Bring your legs out in front of you. And we'll take the ring with us by placing it between the inner thighs. So you'll set up with your feet as close to hip distance apart as you can and your knees will be pushed wider by the ring. And if you are one of those people where the full size ring is a little aggressive in the inner thighs and you have your girdy ball handy, you can totally swap that out. But what we'll do is we'll start with the knees wide, feet and sit bone distance apart, sit up tall, and then take your arms out in front of you. As you inhale, lift up. As you exhale, give your ring a little squeeze and we're gonna roll back part way. And then inhale, you'll let the ring open and rise up. Exhale, squeeze to roll back. Inhale, rise up. Okay, keep going. So it's exhale, squeezing in as you tip the pelvis. We'll do that three more times. And two more. Inhale up. Last one, you're gonna go all the way down. Give it a good squeeze as you roll to the mat. Once you're down, position yourself again with your feet a little narrower than the width of the ring. And then starting with the weight of the feet on the outer border, see if when you squeeze into the ring, you can connect the inner foot. So if you can't quite get your inner foot to the mat, then maybe your feet should come a little wider. And once you feel like as you squeeze the ring, you land the all four corners of your feet on the mat, you're gonna begin to continue a, a rhythm of squeezing and engaging your core. So it'll be on the exhale, we'll inhale, let the belly expand. Exhale, empty out the air and feel all of that gathering in of the abdominals and the inner thighs. And we'll open and close three more. And two more. And one more. As you squeeze, hold this next one and then scoop the belly in more, curl the tail under and we'll peel up into a bridge. At the top, hold there, keeping all four corners of the feet on the mat. See if you can tip the pelvis even more towards 12 o'clock, lengthening the sit bones down towards the heels, and then open the knees here. Exhale, squeeze back in. <sighs> Inhale, open. Exhale, squeeze. Feel the low abdominals really connect to help gather your thighs towards the midline. And three, and two, and one and then take a breath, use your next exhale to roll back down. Inhale, open. We're gonna move the ring to the outside of the thighs now, so you'll dive your toes and knees through, and then suck the ring up to the outside of the knees. Again, if you don't have the ring for this, you can still bridge without really missing out on anything. But if you have it, what you're gonna find is when you place your feet now as wide as the knees while they're stretching the ring, spreading the knees apart, wakes up this outer hip sling again, just a little extra. So you're going to use that to your advantage. You're going to scoop the belly and curl the tail under and peel up. Still keep that engagement of the inner foot into the mat. Don't let this turn into sort of a roll out in the ankles, right? So your inner heel and your big toe still have contact with the mat. We're rolling up and down a few times, so maybe we'll go for six or so. Just let your breath lead you through a few familiar breaths, I'm sorry, bridges, and rolling back down. And then when you reach the top, the next time you're up, stay there. And we're gonna take our hips into some hip dips, spiraling one hip high and one hip low, all at once, equal and opposite. So. We're not just dropping one hip, we're engaging to spiral one hip towards the sky. And then make it balance to both sides, come to the center, and roll back down. Okay, so now we're going to take the knees into tabletop and bring the ring to the inner ankles. If you don't have a ring for this one, you can swap it out for a ball or just have your feet together. And then we're going to take our hands around to the back of our head. 
And we're gonna just slide the shoulders down and take a nice deep breath in and on the exhale, curl up with the upper body. From here, I'm gonna have you just roll back and do maybe three or so more to kind of further warm up that ab curl. And as you find your next one, hold. Take another breath and on the exhale, we're gonna lengthen the legs up towards the ceiling and bend. And exhale, lengthen and fold. And as your legs straighten, see if your ab curl can get a little deeper. So you're not falling back. You're really deepening the engagement with every breath. Last one. And then lower down and rest. We're going to move the ring to the inner knees now. And when I say knees, I really mean thighs, but just kind of just above the knee. And then I'm going to have you take your hands again to the back of the head, supporting your head fully, make that little basket where you drop the shoulders down. And on the exhale, we curl up with the upper body. Now your knees can remain totally bent or soft bend. What we're gonna do is try to keep the effort out of the front of the hips. So I just want that really soft there. And we're gonna try to feel into those low abdominals. You're gonna move your pelvis towards 12 o'clock and then back towards neutral and then 12 o'clock and neutral. So while the legs are moving, it's not a leg movement in that we're not swinging them. We're using our deep low abdominals to tip the pelvis. And it's gonna come with some inner thighs, thanks to the ring. But if it starts to feel like more hip flexors, then just let your feet come lower. Are we feeling that? So we're doing pelvic tilts towards 12 o'clock. So the next time you tilt, hold, and then as you exhale, stretch the legs towards straight, and then exhale again and lower the legs down, but keep your pelvis towards 12. Inhale the legs back up. Exhale, double leg lowers with some wicked inner thighs. Feel those low abdominals really deepen with each exhale. And your leg movement might be teeny tiny. One more. Then bring it in, bend the knees, and rest your head and shoulders down. Excellent job. Let's take your feet to the mat, hook your right foot into the ring, and offer it a little love and stretch. So what we're here to do is stretch the back of the leg, including the calf and um, foot. So let's start by bending the knee and taking the knee in towards the chest, and then dropping that right sit bone down Keep the knee in close and try to stretch the leg towards straight. And Samantha, I know you are uh, being mindful of your hamstring, so carry on and don't feel like you need to be aggressive in the stretch. Just do what feels good. And that's true for everyone. So as we do this, you're hopefully feeling some hamstring, but maybe you feel a lot of calf as well. They can both be tight all at once, and sometimes the calf can be the more tight of the two. And then as you straighten the leg again, this next time hold, we're going to point and flex the foot. Now you can just mobilize the ankle here, but you have the opportunity with your arms to create resistance and make for a really nice engaged stretch. So as you pull with the arms, see if you can really resist the ankle in both directions. So it's not floppy as much as it's effortful, just like we imagined moving our arms through honey earlier, now your actual ankle is moving against actual resistance. Okay, we're gonna switch to the IT band now. So maybe you have your left leg slide out to straight, maybe it already was, but it's helpful if it does now to cross the right leg over your midline and get that hip to stretch. You might have um, noticed we've worked this area a lot and you know, while it's getting, um, it has be, it has acquired a reputation, the IT band and the lateral hip for being sort of problematic, and it can be when it's overly tight, but it's still an important part of our body. So if you are curious, our strategy today is to work it and stretch it both so that the work doesn't just cause you to tighten up there. You can add ankle work, point and flex even here, and you're further helping to release the connectivity that is really 
there and present between your foot and your hip. And then make your way to center and just continue off to the right side now. For the best of your ability, keep your left hip down, but you're being invited to stretch your inner thighs. We've also worked those a fair amount. We're not biased. We're gonna give it all a good workout. And then just breathe into that. Sometimes a knee bend can feel really helpful to give your stretch that extra depth, but if you're better off straight, go ahead and keep it. And then come center and let's play with rolling through the spine as we take the ring towards the mat. We'll take a roll up and then a little teaser at the top. However your heart high, shoulders back. And then exhale, curl the tail under, roll back. And repeat. Scissor the leg towards the mat. Peel through the spine, rolling up. Hover the chest to the sky. And then curl the tail under to roll back. One more time. And roll up. Lifting up high. And then hold there. We're going to hold the ring as close to us as we can. When you're really flexible, you might be able to do this, hook the elbow into the ring. If you're not, you can just keep the arm bent. So whatever position you're in, we're gonna take the left arm hand to the ring and take your right arm up and back and reach away from this energy through that right heel. So maybe you're more like this, lower and more open, that's totally fine. The pulling the elbow in is just where you might go if you have a little bit more flexibility in your hamstring and hip, okay? And then go ahead and circle the arm back to the ring and we'll roll you down to the mat. Scissor the legs in the air if that feels fun to you and take your second side. I did mine with my right or uh, my free leg bent, so I'm gonna do that again just to be balanced. And then we bend the left knee in, flex the foot, toes coming back towards the shin, and then try to keep the knee close again to stretch the leg towards straight and bend. The knee falls in and then we try to keep the knee in and kick the toes overhead. The, the words that are coming out of my mouth are just directions again, not the destination. So if your toes are nowhere near going over your head, don't feel less than um, awesome. You're just stretching what you've got. You've got tight hammies, we stretch them here. And then from the next stretched straight leg, add in the ankle work, point and flex. Enjoy some of that engagement and sensation in the calf. It's kind of like, initially it can feel really uncomfortable to discover some real extreme tightness. But if you're really curious about what it is that's going on in there and you kind of feel into it, you're inviting some things that have been stuck to move and that's really good and you can start to appreciate that sensation a little bit more and now we'll slide the leg out to straight and work our way over to the right into our stretch for that outer hip your left hip doesn't have to stay down on the mat but think about keeping it heavy ish so that the stretch doesn't just fall all the way over into a twist that's kind of a different emphasis so you keep your hip down on the mat or at least dropping back. You'll really keep the stretch focused into your hip and IT band. And then add in some ankle movement, point and flex. And again, don't feel like you have to suddenly fall in love with this stretch. But if you can get curious about what you're feeling and where and appreciate the, the fluid, um, the, the heat and the energy created by the stretch that helps to bring a fluid quality to your connective tissues instead of sort of rigid stuck sort of snarls in your fabric that can be really positive positive. and then coming over to the left opening the leg out to the side you can bring your right arm down to the mat to make a nice stable base shoulders staying open as best we can stretching into those inner thighs the left leg keeping the right hip heavy Point and flex your foot if you want to here. Bend the knee if you want to here. Just playing with what your body needs for the most effective stretch. And then back to center. And then we get to ride the roll up to seated. High teaser. Lift your chest, lift the heel, and then reach through the heel and roll back. And stretch the leg towards you in both directions. 
and then rolling up, heart to the sky, shoulders drawing back and rolling down. Whee, it's so nice to have a little assistance, right? Feeling your spine move with some extra ease in those tough places. And then we'll roll down. I think I might have added an extra one, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and balance it out in other ways. So you're gonna roll all the way up, hold in your teaser. Find that length to your leg and then match it with length to your spine. And then if you have the ability, you might hook your elbow, but you can just hold with the hand. And then you're gonna reach your left arm up and turn back from your teaser leg. And just breathe. You've got that hip and deep stretch again, your shoulders opening, your heart lifting, your spine working into this long line. And then circle the hand back to the front, find the ring, and we'll roll back down. Okay, at the bottom, take your feet to the mat for a moment, and we're gonna use the ring in um, that sort of nasty but awesome way that creates a lot of warmth in our oblique. So you're going to put your right knee against the pad on one side of the ring and then bring your left elbow to the opposite pad. Then you're going to transfer your hands to the back of your head and make your way up into your ab curl. So the ring is big enough that it doesn't let us get as high in our ab curl. If you want to come a little higher, your knee can drop a little bit further out. Hold there and simply engage your elbow and your knee into the ring and feel your elbow, the power of your elbow coming from under your armpit where your left side rib cage is spiraling around your body towards the front. We're twisting and holding the ring between our elbow and our opposite knee. Now it's not essential that you have the ring to do this. You could bring your elbow and your knee towards one another and hold even without it or a block. And just breathing three more breaths. Feel your left foot, pull your heel towards your butt for a little extra twisting power. And then unwind from there. Woo. And then switching sides. So you're gonna take your left knee up and then bring your right elbow up, opposite knee and elbow, and then hands behind the head. And you curl into an ab curl that again, might not be as high as you're used to climbing. And then just roll your shoulders down and breathe. Connecting now your right armpit, your right elbow into that left low abdominals and inner thigh. Feel your right heel pull towards your butt to help create that extra sort of depth to your twist. Three more breaths. And two. And one more. And then you can unwind. That makes my obliques feel very clear and bright. So now we're gonna take our ring, sort of like a halo around the back of our head and place your hands on the inside, your palms facing up and then shrug the shoulders away from the ears, reach your elbows towards the ceiling while the shoulders drop down, feeling your armpits kind of shine up towards the sky as well. Take your nice deep breath in and on the exhale, soften the ribs in the front curl up into your ab curl, reach the elbows towards your knees, inhale lower, exhale elbows forward and feel how your elbows are really just an extension of your upper arm bone and your upper arm bone connects into your shoulder blades and your shoulder blades sort of hug the back of your rib cage and hover your rib cage off of the mat. So your shoulder blades are like two friendly palms lifting your rib cage up Press the palms into the low or into the low ribs and push the elbows forward and down. And then next time you're up there, stay. Keep pressing the elbows forward under the armpits. And really active. Float your right leg. Float your left leg. Reach your left leg out long. Rotate left elbow towards right knee. You're in crisscross. And then switch and switch. Keep reaching through the elbows. Reach through the long leg, point the toes. And last one, each side, come in, lower down, and then land your feet all the way down as well. Okay, we're gonna take the ring and set it aside. 
You can hold on to the knees and just rock and roll up to seated. Okay, and we're gonna use our roller again, just setting it up across the front of the mat to lie on your tummy. So, I think my mat has drifted a little bit. We're gonna take um, our arms straight out over the roller and position it, yeah, near the elbows. I always forget. Reach the legs long, you can have them a little bit apart. Feel your shoulder blades on your back, now rolling or sliding up and down as the roller rolls towards you and away from you. And then simply bring your hips a little heavier into the mat and then feel your low abdominals hover a little bit away from the mat as you roll the roller towards you. Press down into the roller and feel your shoulder blades slide wide and your heart lifts up and then lower back down. And again, hover the heart, press into the roller, shrug the shoulder blades wide, heart to the front of the mat, maybe a little up the wall or out the window in front of you, and then lower back down. And two more. Hearts forward, shoulders down, lifting your chest, finding the length to the front of the body. And then lower all the way down. Okay, we're gonna take our hands to the mat now and come up to all fours. Starting with the roller out of the way, moving towards the front of your mat. Okay, so we're gonna start with the left leg straight out behind you and then set your toes on the mat and then step your toes all the way over to the right side of your mat. So it might even come off the mat. Your left leg has crossed over to the right side behind you and then you're gonna look back over your right shoulder to see your heel or toes or as much as you can. So see if you can feel this line through your body from your head to your heel along the left side of your body, right? So it's like a side bend but includes the leg. If your leg were your tail, it's your tail wagged to the right, head to the right. Okay, and then come back to the center. Step your right leg back, first straight out behind you and then bring it over to the left. So it's crossing your midline and then gaze over your left shoulder and side bend in your waist and through your whole right side to come into this sort of larger version of tail wag and then come to center. And then from here, we're gonna step back with our right foot into plank and then step back with our left foot into plank. Now, you just did this with your knees down. We're gonna try it in our plank. You're gonna hover your left foot and then bring it across your midline to the right and gaze over your right shoulder. You might not see your toes. In fact, I can't. Oh, they're there. And then step back to the mat. Lift your right foot, pull it across your midline, look over your left shoulder and set it down. Take your knees to the mat, reach your tail up and back and have a rest. So we're attempting to do that same side bend in our plank. We'll do it one more time and then rock forward. So you're in all fours and then stepping into plank. So one foot and then the other, squeezing your inner thighs, lift up out of the hands, float the left foot up, pull it across your midline, sort of wag your tail and head to the right and then center, right foot lifts, wag your head and tail to the left and center. Lower the knees down, take your hips back and rest. Okay, and then finally, coming forward, we're gonna take our um, hands to the mat, nice and wide, and then step your feet into your plank with a little bit of space between them. All right, so right foot, left foot, little space between them. We're gonna turn on our toes and open into our side plank. We've been practicing for this all morning. We're gonna do a little side bend here, but I don't want you to think of it as falling. What you're gonna do is lift up out of that left hand and let your hips come down just ever so slightly, stretching that bottom side. Lift up, reach your top arm long overhead. Again, lift up out of that bottom hand, let your hips come down and then lift and side bend. One more time, lower and lift. 
and then circle both hands to the mat, turn to the other side, lift up, and then find that lift up out of the bottom arm and let your hips come down, and then lift the hips and side bend, top arm reaches overhead. Again, keep lifting up out of that bottom arm as the hips lower, and then lift and side bend just one more time. Hips dip, and we lift up and over, land both hands, turn towards the mat, land the knees, and come back to seated. Awesome job. Okay, another adventure we've been preparing for all morning is a combination of two movements. So I'm gonna cue you into a rollover. If any of you are not um, doing rollover for whatever reason, whether it's osteoporosis or just discomfort in any part of the body, you can do um, the half of the movement that doesn't have the rollover and I'll walk you through that. So we're gonna put the ring between our ankles while we're seated, okay? And then we're gonna hold on to the back of the thighs and just start by tipping the pelvis and floating the feet off of the mat. So the ring has an amount of weight to it that adds to the challenge of this, but I'm gonna have you hold on to your thighs to accommodate and you're gonna just hold on there and then just try lengthening your legs. Bend and straighten and bend. And as you straighten, see if you can feel the low abdominals scoop in more, combined with the inner thighs. And then what you'll be doing from this point on is a roll down and back up to teaser. So from here, we'll roll down to the mat. You can keep holding onto the legs, bring your legs in, and then lengthen the legs out, holding on, help yourself up. So that's the no rollover version. And that's what we're gonna do. Everybody can have a brief respite before we get into it. So the rollover version is not necessarily dangerous. I don't wanna scare you about that. Um, it's just, there's some bodies that it's just not appropriate for, but we're gonna use momentum. We're gonna rock into our rollover and then rock into our teaser, of course, using control. The number one little safety note for this that I wanted to make sure you hear is that when you start to roll back, you don't wanna let your legs flop overhead and crash into the floor. You're gonna bring them back so that your legs maybe are parallel with the floor as opposed to coming um, toes to the mat. So just be mindful of that, okay? So we're gonna start in our balance point again. The legs are bent to straight, or bent to start, and we're gonna exhale, draw the low belly in to straighten them. And then take a nice deep breath in, and on the exhale, you're gonna scoop and curl the tail under, hands to the mat, reach the arms long by your side, and then start to nod the chin and roll up into your teaser. And then arms by your side will curl the tail under and roll over. And then scoop and curl and your head comes off the mat immediately. Rolling over, the hips come up, the head comes down. And then nod the chin and curl up as the legs come up. So this version of teaser can be kind of more achievable than the slow motion kind. One more time. Have some fun. And rock. And roll to teaser and then bend and land yourself home. Whew. Okay, kind of a wild ride, yes? So we're gonna move into a Z-sit position, mermaid style, and we're gonna start with the right knee bent, left leg folded back, and then reach your arms out to the sides. Set your left hand down and side bend towards your toes, and then rise up, set your right hand down and reach and lift, hips come off the mat, and then circle and flow to the other side. And again, once your right hand's down, you'll lift the hips and press that left hip forward, stretch that outer front hip, and just keep moving with your breath. And one more, lifting the hips up, stretch, get long, and then find your way back to the center. We'll swing the legs to the other side. Okay, arms wide, right hand down, all the way up, left hand down, sweep and lift. Press that right hip forward, lower and flow, feeling your spine kind of dance or swim through space and arrive seated and over one more time 
lift the heart, lift the hips, enjoy that expansion in your body and along the sides of your skin. And then we'll land, bring your feet together, or I should say cross in front of you. If you prefer a different position, you may take it. And then let's just take our ring for a moment in our hands and reach it out in front of us. Take the arms up to the sky again, and then just lace your fingers inside or fold your fingers inside the ring and bend the elbows, pulling the ring wide as it comes down over your head. This is, if you're not staying for meditation or even if you are, my little offering to you is the opportunity to use this moment with your body all abuzz and yet very sort of um, calmed by the opportunity to stretch and move in such a strategic way. And this last moment is about allowing the magic of movement and your consciousness to kind of give your brain a little cleanse. So imagine the ring just coming down and floating up. And every time it passes around your head, there's a sort of ease that washes over your mind and allows you to kind of find a little bit more zen, calm, and openness. And then we'll reach the arms up, set them here in front and let the ring rest down. Once again, thank you for joining me for class. I hope you had an excellent experience. Please subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded and follow me on Instagram at arwinbrook underscore Pilates. See you soon.